Welcome back to this tutorial series of over implementing composite Simpsons rule. And in today's video, we're going to be implementing our composite Simpsons rule with our calculator. Uh, in a previous series, we developed a recursive descent parser for a calculator. And it, it is an extremely powerful function, uh, excuse me, extremely powerful method that allows us to uh, get input uh, from the user, such as functions, and compute that. So now we're going to mix our composite Simpsons rule and our calculator. So before we begin, we need to first import our scanner and our parser. So we're going to say from scanner, import scanner, from parser, import parser. And here we have our two previously defined, excuse me, previously created uh, scripts. Now we're going to get our input from the user. So we're going to say my parser. equal to parser. We're going to create a parser object. We're going to make a while statement and we're going to get our standard input. We're going to say enter function. And we're going to say if standard n equals q or standard n equals quit, then we're going to break. So that's uh, this is our stopping condition for the loop. Else, we're going to get our A, so we're going to enter A in interval. So we're going to get our beginning of our interval, then we're going to get our ending for the interval. And then we're going to get our N, which is the number of subdivisions. And so now what we need to do is I'm actually going to adjust this here real quick. So just in case our n is not even, we're going to say um, number of subdivisions needs to be even. This way we don't have to uh, explicitly state this here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get our value back. So we're going to print. estimated integrand value. We're going to get our value back. We're going to say value equal to composite Simpsons rule. And we're going to pass in our parser. Oh, and I forgot to actually break this down into tokens. So we're going to say tokens equal to scanner of our standard input. So we get our function and we're going to break this down into tokens and we're going to pass that on our tokens and we need to uh, pass in our a our b and then our n value and before we go any further i'm going to convert these to floats because we don't want to pass in a string value to our function we want to pass in the float value and our n needs to be an int so we're going to cast this as an int. And we're going to say if value is none, and we're simply going to continue. Else, so a value would return none only if uh, the number of subdivisions was even. Excuse me, was odd. So now we need to adjust our composite systems rule as follows. So we're going to re-do uh, our parameters. We have a parser, our tokens, our a, our b, and our n. So now what we need to do is we need to add our variable, like always, at the very beginning. It's always going to be x. First is now equal to parser dot parse our tokens. Copy, paste, changes the last. So in between these two statements, we are going to replace variable with B. So we add our variable A, we calculate the function using parse, we replace X with now B, which is our last, and then we compute as well. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace our variable again with x 
and our value is going to be equal to our parser dot parse of x, excuse me, parse of our tokens, which is our function. At the very end, before we uh, return, we need to remove our variable. So now this is the entire uh, function now implemented with our calculator. So now let's actually test this. Return a function. Our previous function from the previous video was x squared plus 5 over the interval 0 to 10, which is approximately 383.88. So we're going to say 3x plus 5, interval of 0 to 10. Number of subdivisions, let's say uh, 2. So there we have it, our estimated integrand value. And we can go again. Now we can say, let's say, x squared minus 34 times x to the x. So that's pretty interesting. Interval, uh, let's say, 0 to 10. Subdivisions, let's do 100. So here we have our estimated integrand value. I have no idea if this is correct or not. I just threw in some random things. And you guys can probably go out on your own and test to see how accurate this is. And we could probably redo this and adjust our end value. Let's say our end value is going to be a large number. Now this is going to take some time. So the larger our end number grows, uh, the larger it's going to seem. So as we see here, our n value of 100 is pretty close to an n value of 100,000, but not necessarily cl close enough to accept it as the correct answer. And we don't even know if this is even the correct answer. This could still converge to some value if we increase our n value. And so now, uh, in the next upcoming videos, we're going to be going over the Adaptive Composite Simpsons rule, which is an, an extremely powerful tool for approximating integrals. And so hopefully you guys have learned a little bit from this little series, and stay tuned for future videos. <clears throat>